Before we leave tonight, I really need to take a few moments to address you. I spoke last Wednesday night a little bit about um, uh, giving you some information about the upcoming protest that is going to be made uh, on Sunday, 11 o'clock or till 1 o'clock is the scheduled time. We have been in communication with the city and uh, with the uh, police department and the people involved. And uh, I know that some of you are kind of frightened about it. Obviously, it's kind of disappointing. But I want to just give you a little bit of advice about this, if I can. And uh, I, uh, I want to, I'll read some of these things, if you could listen carefully. And something I don't really want to talk about, but I feel like I, we, we're a family. We need to be open about these matters. And I want you to, uh, to ask the Lord to help us and give us wisdom about these, these situations. Last week, I addressed you on Wednesday night about a documentary that's come out that has, uh, has, has tried to spotlight the past of our church. So in an attempt to reconcile some of our past with our present, I want to address the church again in a bit more official matter in just a few moments. I want to talk through some things, and I want to make a public statement that we believe our church needs to make. First of all, we're aware of the protest that's planned to come up on Sunday. We recognize and those who are protesting uh, our church family, that they have a First Amendment right to protest and they will be on their sidewalks and there will be plenty of police activity, I'm sure, and folks that will, will monitor that. I don't think there's anything of any aggression that is, is planned, but we want to make sure that no one in our church treats them unkindly or prohibits them from being here or get, and gives them any difficulty. Please, I earnestly plead with you. Uh, I want to be a good testimony for Jesus, don't you? And uh, I have opinions, you have opinions, but uh, none of that should, should overtake Ephesians 4.32 and be ye kind. So I want to ask if you would please to exercise kindness and uh, treat them with grace and dignity and a kind spirit. We're told today of even one of our members, uh, whether it might have been not him, maybe somebody else, but, but uh, had, had a threatening manner toward the victim and it's been investigated by the police and it should be. We have no interest and being aggressive or threatening or things of that nature. Uh, no reason to be contentious uh, to the victims themselves or to protesting people on behalf of the vic victims. We never want to appear as though we're against the victims of abuse, but rather support those who have gone through that tragic thing. I have been asked and been given a paper and an open letter that's asked us to come and present ourselves to the protesters and stand there without saying anything and allow them just to tell us their, their perspective of us and we're supposed to stand there and take their, their opinions of our church. I don't think it's probably the best um, plan and I don't think it's uh, what we're going to do. Uh, if any of them would like to talk to us and talk to our folks who handle this on a daily basis, we'll be glad to do that. But I think the open forum on the sidewalk is probably not the best way to do that. So we're not going to go that direction. Uh, and it's not to be unkind, but I just feel like it's not prudent to do that for our church. And so uh, we'll be glad to entertain other conversations. And uh, I want to, there are some of our members have expressed a heartfelt desire, and they believe it from the Lord to to um, give them a note, uh, give a victim a note of, of, of some sort of love and compassion for them. There's, that is not prohibited. I would just encourage you that um, you would understand that we need to be exercised wisdom and we're not in any way trying to create an incident, uh, argument. It's not, the, it's not the place. It's not the thing to do. But if there's some folks who want to do that, some have even said, I think, Pastor, I'd like to stand with them. Uh, the church is not going to forbid anyone from doing that if that's something you want to stand with them in there because we, as a church, we equally grieve with anyone who has been hurt and we want them to get the help and we certainly care about them. Uh, only a fool or someone who did not know the Lord would not want that for the victims. If you decide to do that, you can do that without any um, opposition from me or from our church. Those of you who are concerned about our, our sexual abuse may um, know with confidence that we assure you that everything is turned over to the police and that we went ahead and rechecked that this week, or CPS, or on the hotline, or our local authorities. I don't think you have anything to be, to be nervous about and nothing to be ashamed about, in my opinion. 
uh, regards to that and, and uh, taking care of those matters. If you know of anyone who has been abused and you need to have it reported, uh, first of all, notify the police in your jurisdiction right away. Uh, if it's for a minor, you certainly call the hotline. You're welcome to do that. Uh, if you need help in knowing what to call, you can call the First Baptist Church Security. They are advised to know how to help you and will be glad to help you in those ways. If you're a victim of abuse, we certainly want you to encourage you to reach out for help. And reaching out is one of the main things you need to do. If uh, you've been hurt, we want to help you. And uh, there are many people in law enforcement, CPS, and right here at First Baptist Church that we're glad to be uh, to help and pray and point you to the Lord Jesus Christ who can give healing and help. I'd like to just say our church has a mission statement, and I believe it's been consistent for, I don't know that there's a church in history that has had more people come to its property than First Baptist Church of Hammond, apart from maybe the Vatican. Because of just the, the tenure, the outreach of, of this ministry, I can't go anywhere in the world. I went to Guatemala. Someone told me, oh, I've been to First Baptist Church. I can go to, to pastor's meetings and people who would not have ever been to Howell Center have been here for a pastor's school. Hundreds and thousands and thousands of people have been here. So millions and millions and millions of people have ridden a bus alone to come to First Baptist Church of Ham. Almost 40,000 people have gone to Hiles Anderson College. I'll just tell you the scope of so many people who have been here. But our, our, our purpose statement is really to focus on God's heart for every individual. Every individual ought to be saved. God wants no one to go to hell. He's not willing that any should perish. He wants people that are saved to be clean and set apart. For God, He wants people that are clean and set apart to be separated unto Him so that we can prove what that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. He wants every Christian to be serving the Lord, actively seeing others come to know the Lord as their Savior. I think God wants a church to be a place where we can bond others into the church family using love. God so loved the world, and He said, By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one for another. I, uh, I think that love is the only badge of discipleship this wicked world understands. They know that, that love, it'll be a place I love to hear people tell me, and they have told me many times, there's a lot of love in that big room. And this ought to be uh, our mantra, is a loving Christ and loving others. Apostle Paul told Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 5, he said the end of the commandment, the whole purpose of the Bible is you'd have charity out of a pure heart, a good conscience and a faith that is real or unfeigned. The third reason for our church is not just to focus on God's plan for every individual, not just to show the love of Christ and uh, love people, but it also ought to be to communicate God's word. Uh, everything we do here ought to be birthed out of a love for the scriptures. Faith cometh by hearing hearing by the Word of God. And we want to communicate the Word of God through preaching His Word, through teaching His Word, whether it be in the college or Hammond Bible Institute, or Sunday school class, um, whether it be a discipleship lesson, preaching and teaching are two ways that God has given us to give His Word out. And then lastly, to have an impact with the gospel. The power isn't in me, it's not in you, it's in the gospel of Christ. And uh, getting the gospel out is God's main heartbeat. God so loved the, he wants everybody to hear about Christ. So our goal here is to get the gospel locally and globally. Every one of you who are saved ought to be glad that some church did its job. And I'm thankful for the job that this church has done through the years. And I'm very appreciative of that. I got together this week on Monday with several representatives of our church, deacons and staff members. Uh, risk management, security, and two of our church members who have been victims of sexual abuse. And we prepared a statement because we care about everyone who has been hurt in our ministry or anywhere else. Because we abhor any kind of abuse and because we care about the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
And so I want to give you this statement, if I can. It's important to acknowledge that any statement that we provide will never offer full healing to the mental, the spiritual, the physical, or the emotional harm that's been caused in 136 years of ministry by a few. We can't say enough about that. There's nothing we can say that will fix that. However, we want to be clear. Number one, we grieve and have great remorse for any victim of abuse. Number two, we abhor the abuse in any fashion. I hate it. It makes me sick. And it should make anybody who loves Christ uh, grieve. We acknowledge a lifelong harm that abuse has caused in the lives of people who have had it happen to them. It's not something that one and done. There are challenges that carry on for a lifetime. We are committed to providing a safe place for men, women, and children to worship our Lord Jesus Christ. According to our policies, I cannot speak for 13 decades of our ministry since 18. 87 and November the 28th when 12 people signed the charter. But I can speak to this current leadership that we have taken every allegation seriously and will continue to report any allegations of abuse to proper authorities. It is our firm belief that the church family should be a place where people are loved and accepted and where victims are supported. I believe what I shared with you is the consensus of any church member at First Baptist Church. It's not meant to be terribly specific. It's meant to be general and biblical. And I want to thank you, and I ask that you would stand with us as we attempt to continue going week by week, day by day, honoring our Lord Jesus Christ, loving Him, and uh, loving others. I believe that God said if we love Him and love others, it's the whole duty of man. That's a fulfillment of all the law. May God help us to do that.